So I discovered drums uh, around the early 90s. I, I was always into rhythm and I kind of started hitting everything around me with my fingers and with wooden rulers and stuff like that and started hitting cardboard boxes and one day my parents got me a old secondhand jazz drum kit. I think that was about 90 or 91, something like that. So that's when it began for me. <laughs> Uh, I have to say it was really uh, early Napalm Death and uh, Slayer Dave Lombardo, those were like the two things I was obsessed with at the time. And uh, you know, I think at the same time there was a lot of stuff, other stuff that I was listening to like Red Hot Chili Peppers and Beastie Boys and all kinds of, you know, more groovy stuff that also, without me knowing it, was an influence for me at the time. But what my head was focused on was just playing really fast. So. <laughs> These days it's very wide, it's uh, any style of music, you know, pretty much. I listen to anything from electronic music to pop music to, you know, grindcore to, you know, jazz. Like, I'm, I'm very open-minded and I need a lot of variation in what I listen to, so it's, it's yeah, it's very wide. Well, at first for me it was only a practice tool and, you know, I think to be honest, what really made the difference was when I started working with TuneTrack software because all of a sudden, sound-wise, it became something, you know, real and interesting, whereas, you know, the old stuff was still very drum computer-like, the results of that, and not much, you know, not much dynamics in the sound, not very good sounds. So when I started working with, uh, you know, superior drummer and stuff, it, it really made a big difference to where now, you know, I use it for actual recordings. You know, you can make really high quality demos and actual album recordings with this stuff. That's how good it is. So it changed my whole perspective on e-drums. And to me now, it's it's like having another kind of drum kit, you know, and like something perfect to work with at home. Yeah. Um, I'd heard about the software before, but uh, it really happened when uh, basically Frederick Tordendahl from Meshuga, who, who I've been in touch with, uh, sent me an email one day saying that, you know, uh, it would be great if I could, you know, do something with TuneTrack, some MIDI recordings and stuff, which ended up being my MIDI contributions to the Metal Foundry. And then from there on, uh, I got very interested in the whole thing and, and I came up with this library of the extreme MIDI idea, which I then submitted to TuneTrack. And, you know, started doing demos and, you know, the ball kept rolling, so, and hopefully it keeps rolling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my idea with the media library was um, to basically have a very detailed and very precise uh, library of extreme metal beats and because those are very hard to program and to have sound natural when you program them because of the number of beats that are there and all the little nuances that are just you know it would take forever to program a song like that without sounding like a drum computer even with great sounds so you know since i've been a fan of extreme metal and grindcore and very fast stuff since a kid i, I know pretty much a lot of different kinds of beats in that genre and i just wanted to categorize everything make it really easy for people to just be like, oh, I need this kind of blast beat, or I need this kind of fill, or this kind of skank beat, or whatever, and just take it, it's there, you know, you can listen to some variations, pick what you like, it takes five seconds. That was my idea, so. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, whereas the first part really focuses on blast beats and all the different kinds, the second part is gonna be all other kinds of extreme metal beats, so there will be a lot of double kick variations, you know, slow, fast, uh, a lot of like all the slayery kind of thrash beats, all the punk beats and the D beat and all those like, you know, everything that's not a blast beat basically, but still used a lot in extreme music genres. A blast beat is basically an evolution of um, other kinds of fast beats that existed, you know, or that were pretty much invented in the, you know, early 80s. So there's the Slayer beat as I call it, because they made it really famous. There's punk beats like... And basically, drummers started to want to play faster and faster, and eventually the Slayer beat... became so fast that you couldn't double it up with the right hand anymore without having a bionic hand. So then it became... Yeah, so... Um, 
I play it with two feet starting at a certain speed. It basically starts with alternating the left and the right feet, right hand at the same time, and then That's the blast beat. Uh, I think the most important thing is to spend a lot of time playing, being open-minded to different styles of music, um, and just really, you know, trying to get projects going. Um, when I started Scarf back in 93, it was a very small project and it took many, many years and a lot of dedication to actually get to just record an album, you know, which which, you know, nowadays kids seem to want to immediately, you know, get to the top, which is, which is good to have that motivation, but I think they need to realize that you have to spend a lot of time perfecting what you do before bringing it out there, you know. Next up, I'm going into the studio with Soilwork to record a new album. Um, I have a few other recordings uh, that, you know, some of them I will be doing actually with eDrums and with the TuneTrack software. So those will be home recordings for, for other bands that I'm working with. Um, uh, I also have a lot of tours coming up with Soulwork this year when the album gets released. And then, of course, the second part of the Library of the Extreme is also a, a big priority that I'll be working on.